I love playing basketball because it's such a fun sport. The intensity, strategy, gameplay, camaraderie. But there is one aspect that I don't like. Shopping for basketball shoes. Not long ago, I was walking around a large sporting goods retailer looking for a woman's basketball shoes. When I found the section, there were only two shoes. One that looked like it had been taken right out of the men's section and plopped into the women's, and the other that looked like a smaller version of a men's shoe design, but in pink and purple. I was confused, because when I looked over towards the men's section, I saw two shelves full of basketball shoes with like 50 different pairs. When I asked someone working there if they had more basketball shoes for girls, he replied, girls buy boys' shoes. When I was at a factory outlet for a large sporting goods retailer, they didn't even pretend. They didn't have a section for girls' basketball shoes. This made me wonder, is basketball not meant for girls? Why are there almost no basketball shoes for us? Is sport not feminine or girly enough? I could not believe I was the only one to have this issue. So I did some research and found out that my friends were having the same problem too. But it turns out that shopping for basketball shoes is not our only problem. I want to tell you about someone who has raised so much awareness for unequal pay in sports. Skylar Diggins-Smith is a WNBA player, a guard for the Dallas Wings. She has been raising awareness about unequal pay in sports through a series of advertisements, speeches, and videos. One of these videos features a boy and a girl talking about what they have and will achieve in basketball. It is notable to say that the girl's achievements outshine those of the boy. The boy would say he took his team to state. The girl took her team to nationals. The boy made third team All-American. The girl, first team All-American. Three times. The boy made Big East second team. The girl was Big East player of the year. At the end of the video, the boy and the girl say simultaneously, and I'll get drafted in the first round, referring to them being drafted by the NBA and WNBA respectively. But then the boy says, my rookie contract, four million dollars. Then the girl, my rookie contract, $40,000. To save you some math, $40,000 is 1% of $4 million. A girl with higher accomplishments than a boy has been valued at 1% of that boy. I would like you to know how unequal the NBA and WNBA really are. The average salary for a WNBA player is $79,000, whereas the average salary for an NBA player is over $3 million. Men are valued at about 40 times women. If women are seen to have so little value, it is no wonder I can't find a woman's basketball shoe. There is no doubt there has been so much progress in society, with rights increasing for those previously marginalized, whether it's LGBTQ plus rights, women's rights, African American rights, or other visible minorities' rights. But sport, which is so important for our health, physically and emotionally, does not provide equal opportunity for women to play? All of this makes me wonder, where did this sexism come from? To answer this question, we need to go back to the era of pre-colonization. Let's look at Hawaii. Long before the islands were discovered by Europeans, the islands lived in harmony, with each person having their equal role in society, whether male, female, or mahu. The mahu were people that shared traits of the male and female, and didn't define as either. They were valued and respected in society, along with everyone else. But when Hawaii got colonized in the 1800s, the Europeans' values and beliefs were forced upon the Hawaiian people, and their religious practices were condemned. The idea of two genders and gender roles were forced upon the Hawaiian people, and the Mahu were forced to conform to what the Europeans thought gender should be. That meant that in Hawaii, the women began doing the housework and raising the children while the men went out and made the money and did the big, manly jobs. This began happening in many colonized regions around the world, with the Europeans changing the beliefs of the native, native people to be the same as their own. Men were, and still are often considered the better gender, and valued higher in society. I guess as time went on with new advancements and inventions, priority was given to men, and women were always the second choice. 
This no doubt led to the stereotypical traits and ideals of the modern genders. What is the message I am supposed to hear? I am a 13-year-old girl, and I love to play basketball. It's such a popular sport around the world. But despite that, there aren't proper basketball shoes for girls. Brands like Nike and Adidas target their basketball shoes towards boys, because that is the dominant gender of the sport. The best shoes out there for girls are unisex shoes, but even those are displayed in the boys' section. This is a big problem, and frankly, it's sexist, but it can't stop me from playing the sport I love. Although it may have crossed my mind that I could work hard and make pro, I am not interested in working a career where I am paid 40 times less than the men. I have a question for all you men running the big sports companies. Is a man really worth 40 times more than me? Does he deserve all the shoes? I don't think so. I am not worth 2.5% of a man. I am worth 100% of a man, if not more. This past year, I've decided I was not willing to wait for men anymore. I was not going to sit around and wait for large brands to acknowledge that girls need shoes as well. That is why I have created and designed my own basketball shoes for girls, without what would be considered girly designs. You know, shrink it and pink it. My shoe is bright red to represent the fierceness we represent in the world. It is one of the first shoes created and designed only for girls, and it can support you on the court. Aside from its basketball use, I designed this shoe to be fashionable as well. So even when you're not playing basketball, you will want to wear it. I mean, I wore my shoes today. The name of my brand is Girly, spelt G-R-L-Y. And no, the name does not mean your old school stereotypical girly girl who loves pink and purple, glitter and diamonds, and needs a man to protect her. I am redefining the word girly. That's right. From now on, girly means being yourself. Be strong or delicate, loud or quiet, fierce or timid. Being girly is a choice defined by you, not old school stereotypical gender norms defined by a history book. Part of being yourself is being able to do the things you love. And one of the things that I love is playing basketball. I am very fortunate to be able to have a team to play for, friends to play with, and the ability, to, uh, the ability to afford basketball shoes, even if they used to be men's shoes. But many girls don't have a good team to play for, maybe can't afford to play organized sports, and need support to play. That's why I will be launching my pre-sales campaign for girly shoes. Proceeds from every pair of shoes sold will go to Right to Play charity. Right to Play educates and empowers girls through games, sports, and creativity in many countries around the world, such as Uganda, Tanzania, Lebanon, Pakistan, and many more. In these countries, the girls don't have the same rights we do here. The young girls aren't educated because they have to work to make money for their families. But too soon, they get married when they are under 15 years old and have children. Right to Play is making change right now, educating 2.3 million girls every day so that more girls can get involved in the game and change the world. Let's work together to redefine what it means to be girly. We can get more girls playing and work towards a better basketball and a better world. I am not worth 2.5% of any man, and I will not allow anyone to make me feel as though that is the case. So I will wear my red shoes as a symbol that I belong in this sport and in this world. Not only am I equal and powerful, I am girly. Thank you.